So the next thing we're going to be talking about is the Bohr model of the atom. And so what is the Bohr model of the atom? All it is is um, it's, a, it's a model that we use to show different energy levels and to show that energy is quantized. Um, and quantized means that there are distinct energy levels. So this is n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. So to get from n equals 1 to n equals 2, we need a specific amount of energy to jump that. If we have any more or any less, we will not get to that energy level that we desire and it will not work. All right? So that's why energy is quantized and quantized in photons is, is an example. Um, so E, um, this is an equation that is very, very important, um, not just in chemistry but in physics. So E equals HF. And if we remember from before, or maybe if not, we, so, we know that V equals lambda F. Lambda is the wavelength and F is the frequency, V is the speed. Okay? So that's that relation. So how can we manipulate that to put in here? Well, we can also say H equals V over lambda. So these group of equations will get you a lot of points. So commit that to memory right now. And if I didn't mention, H is Planck's constant. You don't need to know um, the number for it. You just know that it's a constant. Um, so if they give you proportions, you just know that energy is directly proportional to the frequency. Okay, um, so when we go down in energy, so say we go from n equals 2 to n equals 1, do we gain energy, absorb it, or do we release it? Um, and so that should be pretty intuitive. We release energy. So if we had something like energy was at, I uh, you know, 4,000 joules, and we went down to energy equals 2,000 joules. Well, where did those 2,000 joules go? And you know that energy is always conserved, so it had to have been released. And going up, we have to absorb those 2,000 joules in order to get to that 4,000. So it should be fairly intuitive. Um, so the next thing we're going to be talking about are excited atoms. So that's when electrons move um, from orbital uh, their normal orbital to a higher energy level orbital. And we'll see what I mean by that. So let's, for example, let's take uh, carbon, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, uh, right? So we had an excited carbon. What would that look like? Well, it could look like a couple of things. Um, but for example, this is one that, it could, that we could see. Right? So we took one electron and we moved it to an even higher energy level. We moved it all the way to the 3s. Right? Another example could be... Right? So we took now a 2s electron and we moved it all the way up to the 3s. But notice we never changed the number of electrons. If we count it, we have 6. If we count here, we have 6 and 6 here. So the number of electrons never changes. That's one thing that you have to remember is that um, a lot of times they'll give you examples of which one is excited, which one is not, and more than likely two out of the four will show um, electrons where they just add an entire electron right here, right? That is no longer carbon. We can't say this is carbon anymore. This is actually nitrogen, okay? And it's an excited nitrogen at that, okay? So we can't say that. So this would be wrong, right? We can't just add a whole other electron and say that's excited. We have to take the existing number of electrons and move them to a higher energy level. Hey guys, remember to post any questions you would like us to answer in the next question of the day down below in the comments. Thanks for watching.